Welcome back to the third of the Povray tutorials. I'm going to show you a new shape today, and that's the cylinder. So far, the only shape we've seen is the sphere. Well, the next one along is going to be the cylinder. In a sphere, we used a 3D vector. That's what you're looking at as I type here. A cylinder actually uses two of these 3D vectors. In the sphere, it was just one because we were pointing out where the centre of the sphere will be. In this example, we've actually got two, and those two points will define the ends of the cylinder. So I'm going to create a fairly short cylinder going up and down here. The third parameter in this case is the diameter of that cylinder. And I'm going to give it some colour so that we can actually see it on screen and run. And yes, we always save. There you go, we've got a short fat cylinder. Now you can play with the different numbers associated with the cylinder. For instance, if I change it from 2 to 0.1 diameter, run it again, you can see it becomes a very thin cylinder. And if I set its coordinates so it goes up into the air, 100 units, and down in, into the ground, I suppose, Minus 100 units will have very tall, thin cylinder. There you go. Now I'm going to create a, another cylinder now. This one's going to go left to right. So rather than using the second coordinate of the 3D vector, I'm going to use the first. Again, we'll put big numbers in. Just put 100 and minus 100. And we'll get rid of the height. Oh, I keep typing the wrong thing. There we go. And we'll make this green. There you go, we got uh, a cylinder going left to right now. You may be wondering why the green cylinder is slightly off cue. That's because the camera is not positioned at zero, zero. If you remember at the end of the last tutorial, our camera ended up two spaces in the air and two spaces to the right. So the perspective has caused the green cylinder here to move off of the horizontal. Let's have a third cylinder now, and we'll run this one, instead of X or Y, we'll run this down the Z line. And again, from 100 units out into the distance to 100 units back, which will put the back end of it behind the camera. And we'll have that in yellow. There you go, you can see that that one's now passing down by the left of the camera. As it goes off into the distance, you can see that the light is having less effect. It's fading because of the distance from our light source. That's something you'll have to keep in mind in your future scenes. Right, I'll show you another very similar object. This is the box object, which, believe it or not, creates a box. It uses two 3D vectors as well, just like the cylinder does. Now what I'm creating here is a very small box that runs from one coordinate to the right, one coordinate in the air, these are opposite corners, and one coordinate into the distance. And the opposite corner of that is one to the left, one down, and one back towards the camera. And let's give that a texture and a colour so we can see it. There you go. So we've now created a box in our scene as well, a blue box. Now, I happen to have created a cube because I, my numbers are very balanced. But we can change that and you can use it to create a more rectangular shape. So I change that number into the distance to a 10 and suddenly it's a long box. And you can change any of these numbers to create a box of any size you want. But let me just put that back, because I want to introduce one last thing to you today. This is the rotate command. Again, it uses a 3D vector. Ooh. And you can rotate this box around its center point in any of the three directions. So I'm going to change I'm going to use the red line, the vertical line, 
and I'm going to rotate the box 45 degrees. So now you can see that the box has turned 45 degrees left to right. You can change which coordinate you rotate at any time. So if I just put it back to normal with no rotation and then I rotate it around the green bar. Let's make that 45. You can see it's rotated in that direction. If I put that to zero, let's see what happens when you do it around Z, which is the yellow. You can see it's rotated in a third dimension. You can, in fact, if you want, use any combination of rotation. So I've rotated it 45 degrees in all three dimensions. And you end up with a box looking in that direction. You can, in fact, have more than one rotate command to get the same effect or to get any effect you care for. If I just reset these to zero, I can then copy and paste a second rotation. So let's say I want to rotate it around the green bar by 10 degrees. And then once it's done that, I want to rotate it around the red bar, or the Y coordinate, 30 degrees. So I've now got two commands. The Povray engine, when it's working out how to draw this picture, it'll execute this command first, and then it'll execute the second rotate. So the 10 degree rotation that's included here would be used in this 30 degree rotation as well. There you can see it's slightly off kilter in two dimensions. That's it for now. Tune in for Povray tutorial number four, where I'll introduce something new again.